Hello and welcome to this third webinar within the FlexiSoft series. This webinar looks at how to configure a Flexi Loop project within FlexiSoft Designer. My name is Ian Keatley Smith. I am one of three functional safety engineers yeah. within SIC. Uh, the other two are Seb Strutt and Martin Kidman. And uh, we also have a number of sales engineers uh, who work for us as well, who are trained up to functional safety technician level. So between us, hopefully you'll find somebody uh, to talk to with regards to machinery safety. So looking at the agenda of today's webinar, we're first of all going to look at what is FlexiLoop. We're then going to look at the hardware and how you select that hardware. We will then configure a loop within FlexiSoft Designer and with that design we'll be looking at choosing the appropriate hardware, how you assign the input and output devices onto that loop. We will then look at power management, there's a piece of software built into FlexiSoft Designer which allows you to see how the power is being managed within the loop. We will then design some safety logic. And then we'll have a look at diagnostics. So diagnostics is one of the key elements when you look at Flexi Loop, because we need to find out which device has been activated on the network. We'll then look at where you get more information on Flexi Loop and everything else related to FlexiSoft. And then we'll look at future webinars that are coming up. So first of all, what is Flexi Loop? So FlexiLoop is basically a series connection of devices and what you do is you have a number of nodes attached around your machine and then attached to those nodes you have your various input devices. So in the graphic you can see there on the left we have a FlexiSoft sending data out to the nodes and attached to those nodes we have emergency stop devices and we also have uh, three safety switches on there as well in that graphic. So with those nodes, we can achieve up to performance level E or safety integrity level three. So those two terminology there, that's from two safety standards. So performance level comes from ISO 13849 and safety integrity level comes from 62061, which are two safety standards related to the design of uh, control circuits for machines. So when, um, so you, that's just your input circuit. Obviously the overall performance level or safety integrity level has to take into account the configuration of the logic controller and also the output devices, so the full safety function of the machine. One thing that has been mentioned in the past is that if you have a number of series connection of gate switches, let's say that you have uh, four or five gate switches which are volt-free contacts, and they're all connected in series, you can get this term called fault masking. And this is described in the standard ISO 14119. And what that means is that if you have a, one of those gates has a, a wiring issue or a fault in it in some description, you could end up having what's called fault masking on it. Now, by using these nodes on the network with the flexi loop, we no longer have that issue. So you can have many, many devices connected in series uh, into these nodes and each of those devices is monitored by the nodes so we no longer have this issue with fault masking so we can still maintain high performance levels and safety integrity levels. The other thing with the nodes is that they are in essence a, a dumb device from the user's point of view in the sense that you don't have to play around with dip switches or send any addressing to them or anything like that. Uh, all the addressing is done automatically for you within FlexiSoft Designer. So there's, there's nothing to do from your point of view when it comes to configuring these nodes. You can have up to 32 nodes per loop and you can also have one meter between those nodes. So you could have, in theory, um, a, a combination of e-stops, gate switches, light curtains, scanners, all connected into a loop and all a meter apart. So we'll go into more details when you see the configuration. 
You can also have up to eight loops per FlexiSoft system. So um, it gives you the ability to have sort of eight remote I.O. networks for your devices. And one great thing about it is that you've got third-party devices um, are supported on the loop as well. So you could use anybody's e-stop, anybody's gate switch, anybody's light curtain, scanner, whatever. Um, from from six point of view and from the nodes point of view, it's just an input coming into the system. So that's that's the great thing. So physically how it would look is you have your FlexiSoft CPU and then you have your nodes. So here you have node 1, node 2, all the way up to node 32. And off of those nodes you connect your devices. So here we have two e-stops wired in there and a light curtain there. You then write your FlexiSoft code and once you've done that you go through, validate it, verify it, make sure it's doing as you would expect it to do. and that's it. It's as simple as that. So, looking at the hardware that's available to you, we have a number of nodes uh, built into FlexiSoft Designer. You'll see it when we go through the software. The first node we have here is this one here. So, if I just bring my mouse over here, what you have is the connector on the left here. That is the connector that will go to the FlexiSoft hardware. So, you'll have an M12 connector attached onto here and then that will go to some flying leads at the other end which you'll wire into your FlexiSoft hardware. This connector here is used to continue the network onto the next node and the connector at the top right is what you attach your input device to. So um, up here we have, uh, well first of all the, the network is always 5 core cable so it's a, it's a con continual 5 core cable so a 5 core cable connects here, goes back to the FlexiSoft and then you have a patch cable which is an M12 5 core to the next node. Up here we have the connector that would go for example to your emergency stop push button and that would be 5 cores coming out of there. So we have two test pulses coming out of here and then two inputs coming back in to here. So this is designed for, it says for dual channel volt free contact so it's suitable for things such as emergency stop push buttons and also safety switches. So that's it's quite a basic node. On the LEDs, um, you've got two LEDs here. This would be for channel 1 and this is channel 2. So if it was emergency stop, it would be channel 1 of the e-stop and channel 2 of the e-stop. We also have this symbol here, which is an LED. And if everything is okay with this node, this will be green. If there are any discrepancy faults or anything happening or there's a problem with the node, this will potentially go red to tell you that you've got an issue. And if you've got a discrepancy fault, you'll see a similar indication on here as you would expect to get in FlexiSoft. If you're familiar with FlexiSoft, um, these would alternate to tell you that you've got an issue with discrepancy. So that's just going through the LED indication and how it's all wired. The next node that we have is again designed for volt free contacts but instead of having a 5 core cable coming off here now instead we've got an 8 core cable. It's still 5 cores running through here which is for the loop but this is 8 cores. And because that's 8 cores we can now introduce an auxiliary input and also an auxiliary output. So again it's suitable for emergency stops, it's suitable for safety switches but that auxiliary input there could be used for something like a local reset push button or even a request to enter. So if you had a solenoid locking gate switch with volt free contacts, um, you could actually have a push button there saying request to enter, which could then put the machine into a safe state to allow the operator in. The auxiliary output could be used for a lamp or some form of indication and it can also be used for gate locking or gate unlocking. So it's a it's very, you know, there's a lot of functions built within that node. And all these signals are sent down to the FlexiSoft so that you can manipulate the data. So that's the two nodes that are used for dual channel volt free contacts. We have another node 
which is a dual channel, but instead of volt-free contacts, it's looking for OSSDs, so it's looking for semiconductor outputs from devices such as a light curtain or a laser scanner. And again, you have the five core cable going through here for the flexi loop, and this connector here would be a five core cable which goes down to your, your light curtain or scanner. It also says safety switch there because some modern safety switches nowadays have got semiconductor outputs. So if, for example, you take something like the SICK STR1 non-contact safety switch, it's RFID coded and its outputs are semiconductor. So you could wire those into that node as well. You'll see it also has an auxiliary input and that could be used for something such a, as I said before, it could be a local reset of a light curtain or something like that. The last safety node that we have, again, it's dual channel, it's suitable for OSSDs, um, but rather than having five cores coming out, it's got the eight cores coming out to the top right connector. So again, it's suitable for light curtains and laser scanners, it's suitable for safety switches, but because we've got the auxiliary input and output, then we could use the auxiliary output for a reset or a muting lamp to say the reset is required or the, the light curtain is in a mute condition. And we can also use it for gate locking. So, for example, um, we have a magnetically locking um, gate switch available from SICK. And with that there, uh, you can send a lock signal down to the uh, uh, down to the magnetically locking gate switch and that gate switch has got OSSD output. So it gives you um, a selection of nodes depending on what devices you want to connect onto your flexi loop. One thing just to note though is that all of the auxiliary inputs and outputs are non-safe. So you can't send safety signals um, into or out of an auxiliary. The other hardware that we have is we have a diagnostics module and as you can see there it's got an input on the left and an output on the right and on its uh, face you have uh, a number of LEDs uh, all the way up to number 32 so this would sit on your flexi loop network and if you had five nodes for example on your loop and everything was healthy you would see five green LEDs up here and if a device was activated on the loop, it would indicate which device had been activated as well. And if any loops had a, any nodes had a fault on the loop, it would be indicated through this diagnostic module as well. So it's self-powered through the loop, and you just plug it in wherever you would like to, to have it. The other module that we have is uh, a power supply. So if you go for a loop that's of substantial length, or you have many, many nodes, let's say you are going up to the maximum of 32 nodes on a system, then you may need to inject some power into the loop, especially if you're using solenoid locking gate switches or the auxiliary outputs, which will take a, a load off the power supply. So it basically boosts the power, and we also have overload protection built in there as well. At the end of every single loop, you have to um, terminate it. So we have this terminator plug, which goes at the end of the loop. So you need one of those for every single system. So that covers the Flexi Loop hardware that's available to you. So the next thing we'll do is we'll have a look at configuring a loop in FlexiSoft Designer. So first of all, you've got to select the hardware. So here's the familiar setup within FlexiSoft Designer. So we'll come up here and we will create a new project. That will then initialize and set up the, the FlexiSoft here. All of the CPUs in FlexiSoft Designer support FlexiLoop. So we're just going to go for the most cost effective one here, which is the CPU Zero. And we're going to be looking at uh, diagnostics later on. So we'll be using these gateways. So as you can see, we have a selection of gateways. And there will be a webinar in the future, which will go through these gateways in more detail. So what we'll do is we'll grab an Ethernet gateway and add that in there. And then we have to select our I.O. module. So if you go back to the, the introduction to FlexiSoft, I'll, I'll describe what each of these modules do. But we're just going to grab an XTIO, 
which gives us 8 inputs and 8 outputs. Next thing we click on elements and you can see we've got the different sensor inputs there uh, that you can connect to the inputs and if we go to our output types I'm going to add on to there a motor which I'll pop on to Q1 and a lamp which will pop on to Q2. Now further down the list you'll see flexi loop uh, if we expand that you can see you can have up to eight loops as I said earlier so we're going to drag loop one over and drop it down and it uses terminal X1 to send a data stream out to the nodes your safety bit comes into input one and your diagnostic bit comes into input two. I'm going to grab another loop and attach that on I'll just take the diagnostic bit up and pop it onto input three and that is basically your hardware so we're now going to go into flexi loop and put some hardware in here so here is your nodes for non-contact um, sorry uh, electromechanical switches OSSDs there's your diagnostic and your power there so we're going to bring over an EMSS5 we'll bring over three of those and we'll pop a terminator on the end and now we need to tell it what is attached to these terminals so there's your your three input elements there so we'll come down to elements down at the bottom and click on that and I'm going to add on to here uh, three emergency stop push buttons so I can just drag it over and drop it down and you can see there's a little blue lightning bolt just to the side of it which tells us that we're using test pulses so I'm just going to rename these so double click on the E stop and I'm going to call this ES1 say okay to that this one's going to be ES2 and guess what we're going to call this one this one's going to be called ES3 so we now have a flexi loop made up of three devices which is e-stops on flexi loop 2 I'm going to choose some more modules here so we're going to go for the EMSS8 which gives us access to an auxiliary input and output and then I'll choose an OSSD as well there. And then we go to elements and on here I'm going to go for solenoid locking gate switches so I'm going to go for this one here drag it over and you can see you get the two inputs for the switch and an auxiliary output for the lock there's the same there and what I'd like to do is have a request to enter on that loop so I'll drag over a normally open contact double click on it and in here we'll put in request to enter and to differentiate between them I'll call this gate 1 I'll just highlight that and copy it and say ok go to the second one bring in another normally open contact in there and we'll paste that in there and change that to gate 2 and say ok so that's we got two solenoid locking gate switches with request to enters and now I'm going to select a light curtain for my third node and attach that on there and I'd like to have a local reset on that so I'll grab a reset normally open contact and drop that on there and the node is in got a red X next to it so I need to add on my terminator so there's the terminator added and that is all the hardware done now for the FlexiSoft system and for the two loops. Now for the keen eye on you there you'll see we're using X1 and X2 so we're using one loop is sending a signal out on X1 and the second loop is going out on X2. Now usually what happens is that X1 and X2 here are used to produce test pulses for any local emergency stops or volt free contacts that you're bringing back into these inputs here but because they are being used for loops I can no longer have access to test pulses so these inputs that are available here will have to be wired um, with no test pulses so that's just one thing you need to keep in mind so that's all our hardware done so the next thing we're going to look at is the power management side of things so if we go up to interfaces and back into flexi loop 
We're currently in loop 2. Now down here there's a little icon that shows you a power connector plug. Click on that and this is where we're going to do a calculation. So first of all you can set your ambient temperature depending on which country you're going to be in and you can also select the input voltage. So if we take this down to 23, up that a little bit, so it's, let's say we've got 23 volts as the input voltage. We open up this and this is going to be the cable that goes from the FlexiSoft to the first node. So you can put in a custom length or you can choose pre-made lengths of cable that six supply. So let's go for a five meter cable from the FlexiSoft up into the first node. This is then the cable that goes down to the actuator. So usually it's a small drop so we could do a 0.6 of a meter cable there. So that is our node 1, node 2. This is the cable from node 1 to node 2. So we'll go for something like a, a 10 meter cable from one node to the next. And then the drop down to the actuator again is going to be quite small so we'll say that's 0.6. You then go to the third. Uh, this is the connection cable from the second to the third node. And what we'll select there is Say we're going 20 meters, and the third node is the one that looks after the light curtain, and then we select the drop there. And then once you've done your cable lengths, and you need to put power things in for your input devices, you just hit the calculate button, and you'll see that it changes. So it shows you the voltage drop going from one node to the next. And if you're all in the green area, you're absolutely fine. If you see it going into the yellow or red area, then you need to put in this power adapter. So let's go and look at Flexi Loop 1. So this is for the E stops. So we'll do the same calculation. We'll say the ambient temperature is 20 degrees and the input voltage is 24. And let's start choosing the maximum length here just to show you the difference. So there's 30 meters. And let's say the drop down to the E stop is 10 meters. We then go to the second cable and let's go out to, to 30. Now you could hit custom here and select 100 if you wanted for the kit for the, the cable that goes from node to node. But the maximum cable that SICK produces 30 meters, so we'll select that. And we'll do the drop there of 10 meters. Now when we go over and hit the calculate button you'll see that we're still well within specification uh, but then again we've only got three nodes looking after the emergency stop push button so it's um, absolutely fine. So that covers the power management side of things um, and when you go online with a system it will actually tell you in real time what it's, uh, what it's seeing so it's very handy as an offline tool as well as an online tool. The next thing we're going to do is look at designing the safety logic. So when you pop into the logic designer for FlexiSoft, and we're just going to change this page one, and we'll call this uh, safety logic. So we just click on here, change the page name to safety logic, and then I'm going to add a second page, and I'm going to rename the second page, and we're going to call that diagnostics because the next section we'll be looking at is the diagnostics of this and what information you can get back. So we to safety logic, um, on your inputs here on Flexi Loop, you only get one bit coming back. So it's basically an anding of all of those e-stops coming back as one input, one safe input. Likewise for your other one, Loop 2, you've got one safe input. And if I go into my XTIO, I've also got a reset input here. So I'll take that up and drop it there. We'll go to function blocks and we're going to grab a reset block. If you go to the previous webinar, we go through the blocks in a bit more detail. Um, so that was an introduction to FlexiSoft Designer Function Blocks, if you want to look at that one. So we select three inputs on the reset block, and we play join the dots. So reset goes to reset, that loop goes into there, and that loop goes into there. We then come down and select our outputs, and there is our motor. We'll take that over and attach that onto the enable of the reset block. And then we have a reset required lamp, which we'll touch onto the reset required lamp there. 
So if we go back down to inputs again, on flexi loop one, oh sorry, it's flexi loop uh, two we need to look at, you'll see there's our request to enters that we just produced earlier. So there's request to enter gate one. You can see it's gray rather than yellow, which tells us that it's a, it's a standard signal rather than a safety signal. I'm going to take that request to enter gate into what's called an RS flip-flop. So when I press that, I want to latch it and set it high. I then go on to toot it onto a delay timer. How I want this to work is that when somebody presses request to enter, I want the gate to unlock. But if they don't open the gate within six seconds, I want the gate to relock. So we set this to six seconds, which is over there, 6,000 milliseconds. Say OK. I then create what's called a jump address. Um, which is just to keep it neat really more than anything else. So this is called 6 second timer. And this is for gate 1. So we'll say OK to that. And then we just touch it onto there, pull it back, draws the line, job done. And that 6 second timer will reset the RS flip flop. So we take it up, touch it onto there. And our output on Flexi loop 2, you'll see that we've got our safety switch for locking there's the gate 1. So we attach that onto the Q output and pop that there. So what I'm going to do is I need to do exactly the same now for the second gate. So there's my request to enter. I'll grab another RS flip flop. Now what I could have done here was do a copy and paste of the logic, but because it's only two blocks, then it's um, it's just as quite probably quickly drawing the logic again. So I take the Q output to there and make a jump address. We'll call this six second timer gate two. There we go. Say OK to that and attach that onto the timer. And one thing we'll need to do is double click on the block and put that to six seconds as well. There's our six seconds. And we will select our jump address, select six second timer gate two, and attach that to the reset of the RS flip flop. Then go to our outputs and grab our second lock to the Q output and down there. There we go. So that is our logic. So what we can do now is pop up to the simulator and we'll run the simulator. So we hit the bricks, put it into free run. And if both of our loops are healthy, they'll be green. It'll be saying reset required. Press the reset push button and release it. And the motor runs. If I request to enter, oh, if one of the loops, there's the e-stop one there. If you hit an e-stop, it trips, reset again. Now if I come down and request to enter gate 1, so press and release, you can see that the gate unlocks, but after 6 seconds it will relock. So you haven't opened up the gate. So if you press request to enter, it then unlocks and locks. And the second gate works exactly the same way. So now we've requested enter and we've actually opened up the gate so the motor's dropped. As soon as we close the gate again, it will automatically relock, and then we can reset the system again. So from a logic point of view, it's quite simple when you've got flexi loop, you've just got these two inputs. So the next thing we're going to look at is diagnostics. So if we go in here, what you'll find in diagnostics is down at the bottom left hand side oh, before we go there, remember we've got the ethernet gateway so we're sending diagnostics over ethernet we're then going to go down to the bottom and there's a tab called diagnostics with the little uh, information icon if we click on that we can get loads of diagnostics back from the FlexiSoft so if we go to FlexiLoop 1 you can see there's our ES1 to ES3 I'll simply drag that over and drop it into the logic page. I'm then going to pick up the information from loop 2. You can get loads of information from these loops. 
Uh, there is my two solenoid locking gate switches and my light curtain. I just drag them over and drop them down. And now I'm going to go to the function blocks and grab a function block from the logic and we're going to choose routing end to end. So simply drag that over and drop it down. You can see it's got two, you double click on it and you go to IO settings and from the number of inputs you can have up to eight inputs but we are going to choose six and it automatically chooses six outputs. Just line that up a little bit and then again play join the dots. So we join all of those uh, bits up to that left hand side of the routing block and we want to send them over Ethernet back up to the standard PLC so the information can then be put on an HMI. So if we go up here and outputs you can see there's your Ethernet module. I'm just going to select six bits. So I'll scroll down there, hold down the shift key, drag all of those six over and put them opposite there and then play join the dots again. So what I want is whenever an e-stop is hit, I want to send that data over the Ethernet gateway up to the PLC, as I say, so you can see on NHMI which e-stop has been activated. So I'm just going to rename all of these. So there's ES1 OK. This one is going to be renamed as ES2 OK. Then we will say OK to that. And this one is going to be renamed ES3. OK. Then we will have gate 1 is OK. Gate 2 is OK. And then the final one is going to be that your light curtain is OK. Now what we'll do is if we then pop over and look at the gateway, so if we go up to interfaces and go to the Ethernet gateway, you will see over on the left there we've got FlexiSoft to the gateway, to the network, and then the network to FlexiSoft, gateway configuration and, the, and the configuration there. So it's two-way communications we've got with all these gateways. So if I click on there, there's all my tags that I've just generated, sending the diagnostic data over to the PLC, and it is that simple to do. So, that's it. Um, so in your loop, you're getting one safety bit coming back to tell you that everything is okay, but then you can drill down in the diagnostics to look at exactly which device has been activated on your network. So whenever you're using FlexiLoop, I always suggest that you need to go for some form of gateway to get the diagnostics back up to the PLC, because otherwise you won't know which device has been activated. So the next thing we're going to look at is report. So for report, we just go up to the top and click on report. And once we click on that, it will then generate a report for us. And Within that report, it's giving you a list of all the part numbers of the devices that you're using, including all of the cables. So if you've chosen the cables pre-made by SICK, you get all the part numbers for those. If we scroll down, you then get general information. As I said before, this section is crucial really because it tells you when the program was verified and it gives you your unique CRC checksum as well. You've got your FlexiSoft hardware. You've got your FlexiSoft logic from page one that we had. There's a diagnostics page. Keep scrolling down. And then it shows you how the system is wired as well. So there you have it all for you. So that's to help you with your wiring. And if you keep coming down, then it gives you a nice IO overview here as well. So here you can see there's your ethernet card. There's the data that you're sending, ES1, OK, ES2, and they're coming from the diagnostics page. On the XTIO, we're sending the status of uh, this information here, and that's coming from the logic page. So all the information that you need is held within the report. So where do you go to get more information? Well, as always, the SIC website is the best place to go. 
and if you just go up to there where it says I am looking for, type in Flexi Loop and you'll have access to all the manuals telling you how to put together and uh, there's also um, loads of other information there on FlexiSoft so you can get everything that you need. The other great place is YouTube. So if you go into YouTube, type in Sick Sensor Intelligence, uh, Sick have got their own YouTube channel and in there there's got loads of videos not just on safety equipment but on everything else that Sick do and it's a great place to go to get information. So what I suggest you would do is um, go to that Sick Sensor Intelligence and um, subscribe to the channel um, which is over here this will come up, you can subscribe to it and if you press this little bell here what will happen is every time a new YouTube video is uploaded by the company uh, you'll get an email notifying you so um, great place to go to get uh, information as well so future webinars um, we've got introduction to FlexiSoft that's already been done um, and if you want to view that then by all means get in touch with me or uh, if you go to the SICK website and type in webinars um, you can request the video of that so you can watch the pre-recorded video for the introduction to FlexiSoft. The understanding function blocks is also up there as well so you can request to download that and listen to that. Webinar 3 is the one that you are currently listening to or watching so um, that is how to configure a Flexi Loop project. The next one coming up is configuring a Flexi Link project, and that is connecting multiple Flexi Softs together using what's called Link. Um, and then we have Flexi Line, which again is connecting multiple Flexi Softs together. Webinar 6 will go into a lot more detail with regards to the diagnostics. So we've touched on it a little bit today with Flexi Loop, but we'll be going into more detail of the diagnostic cards and the functions of them in Webinar 6. Um, and obviously the whole purpose of diagnostics, as it says there, is to reduce the downtime um, so that we can diagnose exactly where the problem is very quickly and therefore increase productivity. And the final webinar in the series, we'll be looking at a robot palletizer application. We'll be looking at a, a palletizer application right from scratch. So we'll be looking at putting in fixed guarding, putting in safety measures, uh, um, applying those safety measures by putting them into a FlexiSoft configuration, writing the code, simulating the code, and, and everything that goes with it. So that is uh, the end of today's webinar. Just a quick run through of FlexiLoop. And if you do need more information, then my details are down at the bottom left there. So as I said, my name's Ian Keatley Smith. There's my email address and direct mobile number, so you can get in touch with me. And you also have Martin Kidman there as well. Um, so Martin lives up in Liverpool, so he tends to cover more of the north of the country. And I'm based in Worcester, so I cover the south. But um, by all means, get in touch with either of us, and they will be able to help you out or contact your local sales engineer, or contact the office direct. So thank you very much for your attention today. I hope you found it useful, and please get back in touch if you need any information. Thank you, and have a good day.